Welcome, everybody, to the BKBK podcast, where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. We are here today in our Westchester studio with me, Brandon. Over here, we got Brian. Over there, we got Kerry. And then, yo, 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 and, yo. And then way, way over there is Captain Kyle McKenna. He's over there in the state of Washington. He cannot be with us today. So our brother in arms can't be with us, but uh, we're going to hold it down for him. Uh, so let's just get right into it, guys. So, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we're here to talk about the Jets versus Miami game and how the Baldwin Bruins did in their playoff game against the Oceanside Sailors. But first, we're going to get into the Jets. Let me just uh, start off by saying this. The Jets played the team that I hate almost as much as the New England Patriots. Um, before Mo Lewis created the phenom named Tom Brady by knocking out Drew Bledsoe and then Jeez. and then Tom Brady coming in the game to relieve him and like totally kept that spot for the next what 17 18 years. Sure. And before Bill Belichick left the Jets for the Pats after being their head coach for only 24 hours. <laughs> there was a team that I hated even more than that and they are the Miami Dolphins. The Fins. The Fins. So how did we do against the smelly fish today? Or did we stink instead of the smelly fish? Mm. Carrie, you're shaking your head, man. Talk to me, brother. What's going on? What happened there, today? There, there was a distinct stench in Older. the air. Odor it was, even. It was, and it was green in color. Oh. Green in color. Like puke. Like mold. <laughs> like mold. Like, like what you see behind me. That's why I put it up. Ugh. Uh, like I have not the game itself was just like watching paint dry. It's hard to watch. You know, yeah. The first three quarters of this game was just incredibly boring. Uh, yeah. Boring. Yeah. Like nobody can make a first down. They right. keep kicking it back to each other to where they're pinned in, you know, inside of their twenty yard line or inside of their twenty five yard line. And um, it, I, I, it took everything I had not to turn the channel. Sure. Yeah. I did actually to, I, I don't want to pub them, but the red zone, I do want to <laughs> pub them cause I like it, yeah. but, um, but yeah, yeah. I, listen, I, I spent a lot of time on the red zone. Um, if or not for this podcast, I would not have watched the game. Wow. I mean, I, let's just be honest with you. It wasn't entertainment at all. Um, let's just put it there. And that's that from, means that means Brian loves Team BKBK. Go Team BKBK. That's right. That's right. I I, I, I had to do it for for BKBK. But other than that, man, even being a fan, not for the podcast, I wouldn't have watched the rest of the game because it was just miserable, man. It's yeah. just oh my god. It, it's you, really outside of the pit six. The pick six was the only touchdown scored in the entire game. Right. I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, for, for me, I. I agree with you guys. Like I was changing the channel so much and I was really just checking for fantasy, sure. you know, because I sure. just could not focus and concentrate on this jet. And then I said, all right, you know what? I play defense as well. Let me just look at it from a defensive standpoint. And from that standpoint, I was like, you know what? The jets are playing really, really good defense. But was it but good defense or poor offense all around by both teams? I mean, it, it's hard to, differentiate the between the two but but it was definitely poor offense which led to the the good defense if we were playing the saints i mean we wouldn't have looked as good you know if we were playing i don't think we would have looked as that's good. that's true I, but you know what? it's the nfl and you got to take what you can get of course. And, and, and it's one of those of things course. like just look at the evidence there did we play good defense and i think that we did because well, you've seen us lose to worse teams like terrible teams we're the jets so we always like you know oh well uh uh you know They've never done this before, and this is the first time in history <laughs> that uh, that a, a quarterback has run for 200 yards. Who'd they do it against? Bitch? Yeah, the Jets or something like that. You're right, right? You know, even though I, I don't know who, what, course, what, what course. quarterback has ever run for 200 yards, but if they did do it, it was against us. It would be against us, and yeah. that's my point. So it's the NFL. You got to take what you can get, and I feel like you know. We had what uh, I think four sacks. Four sacks. Two of them came from Brandon Copeland, who was yep. a no-name guy. Yeah. Um, another one came from Jenkins, our sure. other third-round outside linebacker draft pick. Sure. Um, and then I forget where the other one came from. We had pressure. Um, Jamal Adams once again played a, a, a heck Avery of a Williamson. game. Avery Williamson. And Avery and and and, and Avery Will Williamson. You know, I, I even texted it to you guys. He is my favorite uh, free agent acquisition. 
probably the best move that McCagan made for the 2018 season. I love the guy. And you know what? I have him in fantasy, too. But, but, but <laughs> all right, all right, let's be accurate, though. So Williamson had a sack. A tattoo. <laughs> had a sack. Okay. God bless you. you. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. God bless you. You're welcome. Uh, and then uh, Jordan Jenkins had two sacks, actually. Oh, okay. Two sacks. So he shows up. He shows up for work today. He did. Lunch yeah. pail. Yeah. Finish yeah. your breakfast. <laughs> I well, mean, cause he's, because he's been on the milk carton for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, it gives, I think it gives him like four sacks on on the season, which a little over halfway through the year you'll take from your outside linebacker. So you know you don't want to take anything away from him from that side. Uh, Cameron Wake, I mean, he had a couple of sacks. He had one coming into the game, and he tripled his number. Um, yeah, he had two. You know, yeah, he had two or whatever. So now he has three. Uh, so when, when you're just looking at how putrid the offense was on both sides of the ball, and it, it was just a miserable game to watch. Now to focus on the Jets, in you know specifically, listen, the the, the defense did their thing, uh, where it looked similar to the last Miami game, where it, we weren't going to get the ball back and they were going to be able to run it out, but but actually the defense gave us a couple of additional opportunities late in the game, which we squandered which ended up as interceptions. Yeah. And the difference in the game is that pick six. Because yeah. then you have two field goals, two field goals, pick six, we lose the game. If you uh, think about it, we didn't let up any touchdowns. It was just two field oh, goals. Absolutely. And so, then they had a pick six. So the defense played exceptionally well, in, 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 in my opinion. And, you know, I know that you're not, you know, speaking against that. No. But just to just comment on your point, like I was just saying, it's, it's still the NFL and – we can lose to anyone, which we've seen as evidence before. And I listen, I'm so unhappy with the Jets. It's kind of like I'm glad to say that I'm happy with the defense. Some sort of a bright spot or something. I don't know. Yeah, so, but I'm, I think that's been our scenario for the entire season. Oh, is. the defense played well, and then the offense let us down. I mean, honestly, it, it was the leg of our punter and the leg of our kicker that kept, kept us in the game. It was the you know the kicker being able to you know keep them um, on he their side of the yarder. field. Yeah, I, I understand that, but that was the it's first fifty yard. Oh I mean, no, no, I'm not speaking yarder. against it. Yeah, yeah, and, totally. and he that was the first field goal I think he missed. Yeah, for the for the season. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, I think there may have been one other, but but my but my point is is that our special teams played well from that from that aspect, right now you know. Our offensive line is horrendous, you yeah. know, specifically our center. Oh, can we, uh, can, can we pause there for a second? Yeah. Wait, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Yeah, can we pause there for a second and Please. really get, get into that? Speak, so speak. so he gets benched, right? First of all, it took too long. What was taking him so long to bench that guy? He got benched in the fourth. That's what I'm saying. What too took long. so long? I mean, the, 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 um, the snap had to sail clear over, you know, Donald's head or, or whatever that led to the interception. So he was able to get it. But then he ends up throwing an interception off of it, and yeah. it was just like, what are we? What is he doing out there? You know what they're saying? They're they're saying that uh, because he missed one game, the one where Harrison ended up starting for him, and that was last week. He has a dislocated finger, but yeah, right. yeah. but so don't, don't be on the field. He was right. bad snapping before that. That's what I'm gonna say. Hence the butt. He's been bad snapping since day one. Since day one, and I have never seen a center dictate the outcome of a game like what's happened today with this guy long. I feel like basically Donald could not get a rhythm. He couldn't pa he, he he couldn't plant his back leg. He couldn't get into rhythm. His timing was off. He's always reaching low or jumping or reaching all the way left or right to get the ball, then recenter himself and then focus on the routes that these receivers are running and then he's like a half second too late with his reads and then you know what? He's he's thrown four picks. And I blame all of that on Long. And as a result, I'm blaming that on our coach, Todd Bowles, because you got to get that guy out of there. Get him out. Put Harrison in there. Remember last week when Harrison started? Did we have any missed snaps? No. no. I don't think we did. No. And then another thing, all right, offensive coordinator, if this is going to happen, stop putting him in shotgun. Put him under center. He's an NFL quarterback. All right, he's young and everything, but you guys practice being under center as well as shotgun. Everything doesn't have to be run through the shotgun just because that is like, you know, the whole uh, 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 the in style kind of uh, uh, thing that we're doing in the NFL. Get old school and get under center. He can drop back three, five and seven steps and make something happen. Well, well what I would say is that 
I, I don't think you change what you're going to do on the field as far as the plays you're calling. You get him the heck out of there. Well, that's option number one. Yeah, yeah I, exactly. I totally agree you just, with you. You just get him out of there. You get him out of there, and you saw afterwards, we weren't even thinking about the snap after that point because the snap was coming back. Donald took it where he's supposed to ex, you know, expect it to be, and then after that, he's able to make plays or not make plays. Yeah. So this is the one game I would say, you know, just to pivot to that, and I know we'll get back to the center, Donald looked terrible. He looked bad. He looked bad. He looked bad. He looked bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it, he was late. With his reads, if he was even making a read, he he wasn't able to look the safeties off at all. So he was really staring down his receivers. The he's throwing in the triple coverage too. Like I saw him right, do that at least three it's different the, times. It's the triple coverage, but the issue is that how many of these um, middle of the field set routes where they're trying to find a soft area in the middle of the field that you know there's no motion. You know you have to put pressure on the defense. By putting by crossing. Um, being in motion. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what they're doing is just they're sitting in an area and then the defensive backs and linebackers are able to collapse because, you know, there's no motion. You know, you're not putting any pressure on the defense. It no, makes makes no sense to me. Yeah. Well, the problem to me is is that you have Darnold who's not looking off any of these people. So he's coming no. late and he's staring at that the one interception I think was the first one. Yeah. Into triple coverage, I, I get what you're saying. It was triple coverage, but he's not looking off the linebacker. Like, the linebackers, that's why they sat in zone the whole game. They were was, only rushing yeah. four. Good point, B. I was just about to say right? that. They were dropping into coverage because they knew all they had to do was follow his eyes. They were going to lead him to the ball, and then it was going to end up as an inter interception. And it right. happened over and over and over again. So right. that's what happened in the Cleveland game. And you the know? offense – I'm sorry, B, yeah, but, but, but the offensive coordinator needs to – you know, kind of get a little crafty with it. Okay, they're playing a lot of zone, okay? And just to say what you were saying, Carrie, like maybe get some motion in there so that you can at least flood the zone and create more options, you know? You bring one guy from to the right side all the way to the left. Now you're looking at three receivers flooding that zone that they've established. Somebody's got to be open over there, you know? So I just felt like the offense wasn't creative enough. And when I say creative, it's not like, I want these guys to be doing, you know, uh, um, I don't know, like reverses and little backflips and all cute little things, but just be more cerebral in your approach. And I tell you what, first nine games of the season, I'm a little disappointed with our offensive coordinator, Bates. Maybe an occasional cartwheel. You just, you said no backflips, but. You know what? Score a touchdown and then do a cartwheel. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, give me one of them Odell Beckham, like, <laughs> celebration dances. Do that. Uh, don't, don't go all the way there. You know Don't what I'm go saying? all ODB on me, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he said that. <laughs> oh, boy. But, but um, no, I, I get it. We, we haven't been creative. Uh, I felt like Crowell was on the, was on the field too long. McGuire was out there. Yeah. He, he, why are we running up Good the point. gut the whole time? Tack between the tackles, if it's not working, you know, get on the edges. Um, we were able to run up the balance. gut when it was McGuire, though. He was making it happen. Yeah, up yeah, the gut. He, he was. He he was. But then that that was a little later in the game, mm -hmm. and and you know we were trying to we were throwing more than we were um, running at that point in time, so that kept yeah. him off balance as far as the runs were concerned. Yeah. Uh, but you know, listen. I <laughs> <laughs> the only Talk thing to I me, can the, the only thing I can say is that we didn't have a lot of. Uh, penalties this game not as many except on that one drive where we ended up missing the 50 yard kick where we were on like the 20 and then we end up getting a penalty and then something else happened as well that pushed us back um it i was don't ridiculous i don't think we had as many in action penalties but i think we had the same amount of pre-snap penalties that's really re yeah there was like seven pre-snap last game are you sure no we, yeah we didn't have as many pre-snap penalties this game i didn't think so either Okay, no. well, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I feel like, you know, maybe I was just quick to just get fired up and annoyed, but I definitely noticed a few <laughs> pre-snap penalties. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not giving these guys any more grace. I'm just thoroughly frustrated. So, Bowles goes. Um, I, I never want to get rid of a coach in the middle of a season. I don't want to be like the Cleveland Browns. This is the end of the season right now. Does Bowles go? Yes. Yes. It's not even, it's not even a question. Yeah. 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 Not even a question. And, yeah. and McCagnan is on his last legs because what have you given Bowles to work with? The offensive line is basically the criminal in today's game. It's paper mache. And they stink. Paper they mache. stink. So then you're going to tell me, McCagnan, that uh, uh, this is the first time this season that you're seeing law along with all of these bad snaps. You should have vetted him better and not brought him in here. I want I want long cut today. 
cut him today, bring in that kid Harrison. Okay, listen, maybe he's not as good at the point of attack, but at least he's not going to cause my quarterback to be ruined. Don't ruin my quarterback, B. Don't ruin my quarterback, everybody. Don't ruin my quarterback, Jets fans, and, 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 and whoever else coaching and management and front office. Don't ruin my quarterback because we waited too long for this. The equipment guy. The equipment guy. <laughs> put a double neck roll in there or something. <laughs> like Andy Perlo. <laughs> we played with this guy, Andy Perlo. Oh, man. And he used to wear a double neck roll. I never, I never really liked it. He used to take me to Taco Bell for lunch. He did? He did? That's my dude right there. <laughs> Gotta love Andy <laughs> Perlo. That was my dude right there. <laughs> and he kind of spoke like, like, kind of like Joe Namath. You know, like how we make fun of Joe Namath. Well, you know, hey, br- you know, he used to call me Bubba Paris. I never liked that. You remember that offensive lineman for the yeah, 49ers? Sure, sure. And he wore the same number I did, seventy-seven. <laughs> he used to say, uh, <laughs> "I was like Perlo. I'm not Bubba. I'm way better looking." So, so what, what say you, Kerry? Does does uh, McCagney have to go too? Same year, or, or we give him another twelve months? I think you give him another 12 months. You see what he can do with this money. You see if he can get a couple of uh, edge rushers. There's, there are going to be a few that are going to be on the market. You see if he can do something with this offensive line. He's had the opportunity to to address the offensive line. Um, but again, there wasn't a lot out there in free agency with the exception of Solder um, at left tackle. And we see what he is with the Giants. Hot. So, Girl, you know, my, my, my biggest, my biggest, Criticism of him is not being able to get the offensive weapons in the form of receivers in here. And the dude um, can't draft. Let's just call it what it is. He can't draft. And in my opinion, you get rid of him at the same time you get rid of Bowles and just cut bait. Oh, you just cut bait. I mean, listen, if we're, I, I didn't want to get rid of Bowles, so that that was that was my thing because offensive coordinator. I wanted to keep some consistency. All of those things reign true. But if you're going to sit here and talk about the lack of talent and then hold Bowles accountable for the lack of talent, how do you not get rid of the talent evaluator? I well, I'm, not, I'm, not holding, I'm not holding Bowles accountable for lack of talent. I'm holding Bowles accountable for all of the, the um, miscues on time management, for the miscues on you know, the pre-snap, the, the, the pre-snap um, penalties. Sure. Sure, um, sure. The the, undis- the the undisciplined nature of the defense when there is as much blown coverage as we have had. Now they didn't it didn't show itself as much in this game, but the last few games it definitely has. Where receivers are wide open, you're not you don't even have to throw them open because they're because if you know they're they're having discussions on the field of well, oh that that was supposed to be your man, you're supposed to cover that. I mean, it just doesn't make any just that part of it doesn't make any sense. But he's supposed to be a defensive guru. Yeah, I will. You know, he he is. I mean, I'll tell you what, if 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 we get rid of Bowles, um, I would like to keep Casey because I, I like the the defensive system that we run. Maybe Casey Rogers can stay. But I think the offensive coordinator and Bowles, if things don't get better quick, I, I would not have a problem with either one of them going. And then soon thereafter, I'm going to give McCagan one more draft, and that's it because he's blown it with the offensive line. And then just to speak to you, uh, um, speak on what you were talking about, um, in, in the NFL and free agency, you rarely see like high-end starting quarterbacks hit the market like what Cousins did, which is a rarity, and that's why he kind of elevated the whole uh, money aspect of, of, of the quarterback position in free agency sure. and left tackles. Yep. Because people value those positions the most, and defensive and, and ends. edge rushers, yeah. yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So, so you rarely see them hit the the market. So, what what uh, McCagney should have done was focused on that in the draft. You can get your interior linemen through free agency, build those guys up, but get your guys in the draft. And he hasn't done that. He's waiting until the fifth and sixth rounds to address that. And I think he's only done so twice. I think he's only drafted two O linemen. So. And then we're, they're, they're just dropping off. Um, uh, DeBrickishaw, retired, right? Um, uh, what's his name? Mangold. Mangold, gone. These are two guys. Like, Mangold, to me, is a borderline Hall of Famer. And DeBrickishaw is at least uh, a Jets ring of honor kind of a guy. So you have to replace those guys with high-end people. And he, they just didn't do it. He just put a Band-Aid on it and said, all right, let's rock. And we're not rocking. Not at all. Not at all, man. So, I don't know. It's it's 
this game just really frustrated me. It really opened my eyes even more to our deficiencies as an organization. Um, and it's, it's, it's just another frustrating year of being a Jets fan. Can't put my finger on it as far as like what to do first, but there's a lot of things that need to be done. <laughs> um, like Fair I said, enough, uh, I, I get rid of McCagnan too. I mean, cause, cause you got to You have him go through another draft with somebody who you're pretty sure can't draft. Yeah. Right. I mean, so this draft is ultra important because you have your rookie quarterback here who just threw four interceptions and confidence has to be at an all time low right now. Mm -hmm. um, you have to solve the offensive line issue. You can't be sitting around here like the Giants throwing money in free agency, <laughs> drafting the wrong people and then still talking about um, we have a bad offensive line. We have to fix that first. Well, you yeah. just spent all your draft capital and financial wherewithal to do so, and you still couldn't do it because you didn't know what you were doing, I guess. He, right? need, he needs to go to the school of the Rams as far as how to put together a sure. really good team via free agency. Sure. And blend that in with your draft picks because sure. they are they hitting on it, I tell you that much. So I have a question. Yeah. What are in you know, in in in, in, in your opinion, um, McCagnan's top five acquisitions since he's been here for his tenure, and it can be free agency or draft. It's a great question. Mm. You, you got to put Jamal Adams up there. You have to. Got yeah. Put Jamal. Um. Now let's before you say Jamal. Now remember who we could have had if we didn't draft Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> Shout it out. <laughs> Let the audience know. Mahomes <laughs> or, or Deshaun Watson for that matter. Uh, yeah, yeah. let's one. let's put either one solves the quarterback. But nobody, nobody was nobody was drafting Deshaun Watson at six. So. I was, bro. Let let's call it. I mean, if you, when, if I you say, go... when I say nobody, I'm talking about the NFL. I'm not talking about you. And you know they need to take your word for it, B. They do. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody was drafting Mahomes at six either, because he didn't go at six. He went ten. I mean, so yeah. so so let, let's talk about it. I mean, it's either you you're gonna listen to the people that are actually watching this dude on tape. How early was I talking about Deshaun Watson? This is our guy. No, nah, I give it to you from yeah, day one. Early, but day I was early. I was definitely I was definitely with Kyle on the Mahomes um, bandwagon too, though. But you know, I think what we're saying is either way. Like, let's just say we went with Brian, and then you went to uh, um, uh, Watson, or you went with you and Kyle and went with Mahomes. Either way, those are great foundational pieces to start a franchise with, as you can see with. Kansas City, as you can see now with Houston. And the funny thing is with great players, you showed Deshaun Watson struggle earlier in the year. He's sure. rebounding, man. He's coming back. Sure. You know, so it's it's like, you but know. That, that said, do you think uh, either of those quarterbacks would have had the weapons that they have here in New York? Would they have developed the way in which they've developed since they've been in their respective homes. No, and that's probably and that's, why and that's an issue. McCagney that, might have to go like what Brian says. Yes. Right. That, that's an issue. That's an issue. I mean, D Darnold has to have an opportunity to develop. And, um, you know, uh, Mahomes has in his head coach one of the best offensive quarterbacks, minds. Off offensive minds and um, quarterback mentors that there ever has been. Sure. Yeah. So... Yeah. That's why um, you got to get rid of bowls. I mean, not, now you're talking why you got to get rid of everybody. You you got to cut bait on everybody. Because if you're talking about keeping the evaluator around that can't evaluate, and you're talking about the, the, the guy who only knows defense as far as the coach is concerned and can't really coach quarterbacks, then where are we going with this team if we keep the leadership the same? Nowhere. Right. Nowhere. 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 No, it's, you're right. I mean, Listen, I mean, I know we're kind of switching up topics just a little bit because I still want to get that question answered and go down that list well, a little bit. Well, we got Jamal Adams, but then it went on a tangent because of other stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I it's mean, hard to not go on a tangent because we stink so much. We need to talk about really? it. Really? Yeah. Do, we, do we have another, you know, um, all-star player? Yeah, our quarterback. I believe in Sam Darnold. I think that's a great move. But do you put uh, – could you put him on the top five? He's sitting with 11 yes. touchdowns and 15 interceptions in his first year. I, I can't – I mean, if he ends up in the top five with 11 and 15, then that's saying something. I tell you what, 
Peyton Manning had a terrible first year. I'm not, I'm not talking about – listen, I'm not talking about what happens after the first year. You'd still put Peyton's first year as was pretty bad. Yes, it and was. That, and that's okay. Yeah. I, that, that's fine. Yeah. But, but he hasn't been the year two, three, four in order to look back and say, you know what, that was a great pick. I know. It's still – you know, still under evaluation. That's what I'm saying. It is under evaluation, but we're evaluating as we go. And I do see he's in the top five. I do see so because I don't see th- there's other quarterbacks that I watch out there and I don't see their intangibles like how I see um, uh, Donald's intangibles and how like I still think he has a really good pocket presence. I think he's got a good arm. I think when he has time, he ha- he- he's um, he's accurate. And I also think that he's mobile. Okay. And so I think that he's sharp and, and, and he's getting all of this game time experience with a very poor team, very poor coaching, and he's only twenty one years old. So I'm seeing a high ceiling with him. Yeah, yeah, but we're not talking ceiling, we're just talking about the team. I'm talking ceiling. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking all, ceiling. All right, so 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 is he higher than Leonard Leonard jury, Williams? I think the jury is out right now right. with regard to him. I don't think you can make that call. Make what call? To say he's a top he's a top five um pick acquisition on, on McCagnin's of, of McCagnin. I know you guys are basically saying that it's too early to say that. Yeah. Right. We're and talking I'm, about performance. We're not talking about potential. I'm talking about based on performance. Well, isn't that why people draft what they draft? They do it based on potential because, you know, you, 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 you're hoping that they perform well. And right. But I'm, ta- I'm talking about from this, for this exercise, if we're asking what are the top five acquisitions that, um, McCagnin made in the draft yeah. since he's not even in the draft. It could be you know free agency too, because yeah. obviously we spend a lot oh, of money okay. on people. Yeah. But but go ahead. But 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 so I'm saying is that the criteria has to be based on performance. It can't be based on you know potential performance. Why not? Because because it, it, we don't know what Darnold is going to be. We I, we only know what he is right now. I get it, but what I'm saying is I'm seeing these intangibles that give him a really high ceiling you know i mean like look at um bradford i'm not not bradford uh baker mayfield he's playing pretty good but i think that he can play even better but his team stinks so i'm looking at it like the jets their team stinks really really bad and for him to be holding down the fort of as far as what he's doing he's not playing that well but we've seen him play well like against detroit and other teams I've seen like, like this kid can be really good, and if our O line, if our receivers get open, if our O line blocks and stuff, this is how good this kid can be. So I feel like I'm seeing that, but then since we stink so much, I'm seeing more of the bad than I am the good. But I'm seeing the intangibles with this kid Donald, and I do think, and I do honestly believe that um, he is in the top five of McCagney's tenure of acquisitions. Because I'm, and he's also a foundational pick. So, well, who who else is there? I mean, because now you have Jamal Adams, you have you have Donald, Leonard Williams, or or lower. I wasn't necessarily ranking them. I was just saying top five. You know what I'm saying? But if you had to rank, because because now you know we we you know we might end up with six people, and does that knock Donald out or does it not? But 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 do you put Leonard Williams in there? You said yes. Do you put him higher than Donald? Is the question. How about this? Why don't we why don't we establish the five and then we can start ranking? All right, so l- let's see if we can come up with five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, who right. who else is there? Right. May? I, are you are you putting May there? No, I'm not putting May there. Okay, so May's not there. I'm putting Avery Williamson there, inside linebacker. He's playing lights out this year. Oh, no, no, listen, not no. lights out. He's playing very, very, very good. Okay. What about Robbie Anderson? No way. Why not? Why not? Because Why not? Thousand, based, I, I, on, based on what he did last year, almost we're talking about receiver. we're talking about we're talking about body of work, right? We're talking about body of work. We're talking about potential. We're talking about all that because what Robbie is what this is his third year. This is yes, his I think it's the third, third year. year. Yep. Okay. okay. So his first year he wasn't hitting all that. His second year he did really really well, which was last year, and then this year he's not doing that well. And actually, this year, I feel like his skill set is being exposed. Like, to me, he's only successful when he's running deep routes. Like, anything over the middle, he's not doing all that. Yeah, but the issue is that, again, my problem is they're not using him the same way in which they did last year. They're not making him vertical. That's true. 
They're not allowing him vertical. And part of that is because of Donald's yeah. development. True, but so, you know what? They're so all line too. There's, there's great players that you can use in any way, shape, or form. I feel like he's a little bit limited, and I want more of a limitless player. Like, you know, he's not going to be ODB or, or, or AB or – um, Julio Jones or anything like that who can play any which way, run any route. He can play like a horse or a gazelle any which way you look at it. It, it doesn't matter. And I feel like Robbie Anderson is a little bit – he's a little bit one or two-dimensional. Two yeah, he's, yeah, he's he, one-dimensional. He, yeah. He's one-dimensional. He's not, so, not, he's so, not right. so, then, so then I cannot put him in my top five is basically what I'm saying. You, you know, so you can't put a thousand yard receiver in your top five. Well, he needs to get a thousand first. So and, check so who's the, the last one? Well, I'm saying last year <laughs> he didn't get a thousand yards. Yard, who's the last thousand yard receiver we had or close to it? And now it's or close to a it? new one. That that was the closest that anybody and, came and, prior and, to that. And then that's not his pick. And that's not his acquisition. That's on it's a watch. So you can't even put him there. <laughs> So we're not even done. Look, look at hey, look at Kerry. <laughs> he getting mad at me already. Check him out. Look, 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 look. I, I got, got a close Herndon. up on you, Kerry. Herndon's on my list. <laughs> Herndon's on my list. Herndon's on your list. Yes, all he right. is. All right. So then, Four all right. catches for sixty-seven. Nope. Developing. You just love having that. Funny, you know, as if you were the only one that <laughs> said he was going to be decent. Cut it out. And he's and he's and he's, and he's, and he's Darnold's um, roommate. What you love that? Right. Yeah, love that. Love so that, so love do, do, do you love Herndon more than you love Donald? Oh, wow. No. Because, of course not. Because, okay. because Darnold is going to be handling the ball way more than Herndon is. All right. So, so be running my offense. So let's, let's just recap. So we got, we got, um, we got Jamal Adams. We got. Check. Huh? No, I said check. Oh, yeah, yeah, Thumbs yeah. Check, yeah. check, check. Uh, check. We got Big Cat. Check. Donald's up there. Check. Avery Williamson. Well, the Donald thing's still in dispute. You guys are like arguing me down, so I don't know. It, it it's it's still okay, there for okay, me though. Okay, Avery Williamson gives us four. Check that's four, and we don't have a fifth yet. Not yet. Let's talk about it. Who else is there? <laughs> we is, is, a, right now, Herndon's in the fifth slot because we don't have anybody else. He's an honorable mention fifth, in my opinion. What about McGuire? Nah, can't can't put him there. Nah, he just he just Why? played today. What about potential? Again, that's just today. I'm talking about last year too. He wasn't playing that potential? much. He wasn't playing that much last potential? year. Oh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put him in top five. I, no way. I, I wouldn't. No way. Actually, I like him, but you know, had he not hurt his broke his foot or whatever else, then I think my, he might be there. But he's not. That's Cro why. I'm how about saying, Crowell? That's how about why Crowell? I'm, that's why I'm saying it's difficult for you to use potential. Well, how about Crowell? I mean, well, hey, let, let, you know, it's, it's it's not an exact science here, but uh, Crowell, what, would you put Crowell up there? Pretty good acquisition, but we can't yeah. run the ball because we have a pretty stinky offensive line. He ran for 200 yards, which actually tops the, the league right now for the season, yeah. and it was a Jets record. Just would, saying. Would, would you put in Beecham in there? <laughs> Beecham? Leave him on the beach. Yeah, leave him on the <laughs> beach. I'm leaving that kid on the beach. I'd, I'd put, I'd put Crow Crowell ahead of Herndon. So that would be my fifth slot right now. I, I Who else is there? Is there da what about Darren Lee? Solid year thus far this year. I think he's like third or fourth in the team in tackles. But no, you said no. Huh? That was a poor first round draft pick. <laughs> Just my opinion right now. And he's not top five, so you know I, I, I no, I'm not putting him again uh, ahead of Donald. But so then you think Donald belongs there? Then what about Claiborne? I like Claiborne. Yes, he's in there. Yep. Yep, that's a good one. See, we just need the time just to kind of think about it a little bit. But, yeah, Claiborne is there. He's in there like swimwear. Yeah, absolutely. The problem so is I, we're right. I was going to say Jermaine Johnson, but he's never on the field. Are exactly. we talking about potential or what are we talking about? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I never really wanted him. If you if you remember, you know, let's go back to the videotape, as your man likes to say. Sure. I never really wanted that guy. Mm. You know, I thought we were going to pay too much money for him. And they're giving him Darrell Revis money. He's not even close. I'm not feeling oh, wow. him that much. If I'm I'm speaking for Kyle. How about bust the screen? Negative. 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 The problem is we're ranking against ourselves. And when you have a a, a, <laughs> a shallow pool of talent, first of all, it's hard to come up with five good players that aren't flawed in some particular way. And then the five that you're looking at, you're like, hmm, would they start on another team? <laughs> I wow. mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Wouldn't they, they be starters well, on another squad? Adams definitely would. Of course. Sure. Big Cat, sure. Yep. After that, 
Dicey. Mm. Williamson, Dicey. I mean, Tyson's let. I mean, Titans let him go. They they could have resigned him if they wanted to. M- McClendon, McClendon would though. Williamson is not Dicey. No, well, I, I'm just I'm just saying. Like, it, listen, we no, were, hey, were people hey, hey, knocking hey, down his door in order. To, we didn't even know who he was, bro. We just, you know, what I'm saying, it was like, I, I like how he's that's playing. true. I, I like but how then he's you playing. know what? When we vetted him, when we checked his stats, we were like, yo, this is like the top three inside linebacker in the entire league. Yeah, I, yeah, no, that, I mean, was a, that maybe, was a steal. By maybe, all accounts, by all accounts, that was a steal. That was a steal, and you know what? It depends on the market too. Are we really following things that are happening in Tennessee? Tennessee Titans. It's the market too. People know more about, say, the Jets, unless you have a bona fide star, um, than in say like Tennessee. I'd say I think it's a market thing. But this guy is a baller. <laughs> to throw a monkey wrench in there, I think we might want to acknowledge all of the people that he let go that were great, <laughs> let go non-negative <laughs> acquisitions. Give us, give us an example <laughs> of that. Um, Muhammad Wilkerson. Um, you know. We just we just talked about um, our center, our ex center. Um, yeah, he popped up somewhere. He play, He was playing today. What, Wesley Johnson. Yeah, that one. No, 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 no. I'm talking about mango. Uh, a mango. Ma- mango. Yeah. Right. He's back in the league. Mango. No. Oh, no, he's not. No, That's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. We we had to let him go. I mean, yeah. but that was that was a big deal when we let him go. I'll tell you what, though, with with Muhammad Wilkinson, he was having a good year in Green Bay until he got he hurt. He was having a decent year. I'm not saying he wasn't having a good year. He was having a decent year. It was still early was, in the I'm, season, though. So he wasn't season. having a year that would have would have warranted us keeping him for that money. Nobody's saying that, Kerry. <laughs> well, we are. We are saying no, that. No, we're not. We're I'm, I'm just saying, like, we're he was evaluating. having a good year. That's all. <laughs> Gee whiz. This guy, this guy is fired up. <laughs> I'm, I'm angry. Yeah, and I want so am I. Three and six, man. You see what you're doing, Jets? Over here, you're causing discord and trying to, you know, mess with the team chemistry over here. You want everybody's heads to roll, even on BKBK, yo. This, this Somebody's be, got... This, this, could, this is a great segue to peak me, tweak me. It is, it is. You oh. know what? You know what? Play the music. How about that? Let's really get angry. Now you got to give, give me more lead. Time. I got to give you more on. lead, huh? <laughs> you ready, you ready, you ready, you ready? Ready, let's... Yeah. Ready, 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 yeah. ready, 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 ready. <laughs> that sounded like the reggae version, Gary. What are you doing right. over there? That is, that yeah. is the reggae version. <laughs> He's doing the bogle. He's doing the bogle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know you guys just heard that high energy music. That's because Team BK BK is fired up. We are to let you know what tweaks us and what peaks us. Uh, All righty. So I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna go to Kerry with this one. Look, look at his face, y'all. He's twisting up his mouth and everything. Look, look, look at this guy. Yeah, look you know, you, you know, you know what I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about my boy Herndon. Four. Oh. For sixty-seven, I'm guessing that's a peak him. me. I, I, I guess that's a, you starting that's, off with the peaks. A, that's a peak me. That's a peak me. He is developing into a reliable target um, for you know our um, developing fifteen-year investment. Now, Who, I, who's I, not I a top now. five pick? Who, who's right. not a top who's five a top acquisition five right now? Because we don't know what he's going to be. It's, it's <laughs> on, all on potential, right? And <laughs> you know how we stole him from the uh, blue guys on the other side of our stadium. Um, and, and I want to add to that, Peak Me, I want to add Anunua, who basically made a statement and said, look, I'm here. What are you doing with that long run that he had? Sure. He was carrying half the team. Truck, like, man, truck. What, like, like, yeah, like, what are, like, what are y'all doing? Y'all don't see me out here? So that's he's definitely in my Peak Me. My Tweak Me, you know what that is. And I've opened the, opened the uh, segment, um, opened the show with it. It's our offensive line and specifically the center position. And, and it is deterring um, our ability to develop our quarterback. And I don't know what we're going to do. I know all I know is that I don't want to see Spencer Long on the field when we play the Bills. Not That's at all. I'm saying. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Without a doubt. As, as a matter of fact, I want him cut. So No, you know, I don't want him cut. I need We need depth. On the line, we and I'm not zero. saying so because we have zero. So I'm saying we need to move him to a guard position um, and use that, use him as depth. If one of those guards can then go ahead and play center, you know, I, I like his girth and everything. He's a powerful guy, but the guy can't. He, he I think he's ruining my our, our it's not quarterback. blocking well. Let's let's just be honest. I mean, every time I look up, you know, the whatever the nose guard or whatever is in the lap of our quarterback. So yeah, I don't even think he's doing a great job there either. 
yeah, I'm, 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 I'm over it, man. It's, it's cheap. Where's? So those are my pick me and tweak me's. Well, you know what? I, if you don't mind, I'm yeah, just going to take go. this one. So I'm going to start with, uh, with, with, with what peaks me first. And I feel like today, in general, um, I'm just gonna give me. I'm just gonna give the whole defense a peak me segment. I think that we played exceedingly well. I think that uh, if you think about it, uh, Miami didn't score any points on offense. It was all special teams and defense. They kicked two field goals, and um, they had a defensive touchdown. Um, the Jets put pressure on their quarterback. We uh, basically held Kenyon Drake to I forget how many yards, but he didn't have a, a great game. And and Gord, he had a decent game, but uh, we held him as well. And and none of the receivers were really hitting on anything either. So I think the Jets played really well. Jamal Adams played well. The Big Cat played well. Um, Avery Williamson, one of the top five acquisitions from uh, Mike McCagnon, played exceptionally well. And um, uh, Brandon Copeland, uh, basically both of our outside linebackers played well today too. So I just think it was all in all um, – a really great defensive uh, effort. Um, as far as the secondary is concerned, we didn't see any balls really get behind us, no real big plays. And, you know, the Jets, we love, like, having backup quarterbacks, backup running backs, back whoever. Turn into all pros. Turn into all pros, and that did not happen today. But since we are still the Jets, we still stunk it up and uh, let them uh, uh, get a win over us, and we're walking out of their stadium with our hands, heads down, you know? So, um Basically, um, I just think that the Jets just played really, really, really good defense. So that peaks. And I think that today's effort was basically just the straw that broke the camel's back. And I want.